Welcome to Plasencia, Belize. This coastal village is one of the top tourism destinations in Belize, and it's not hard to see why. Tropical beaches, charming streets, laid back atmosphere, and friendly locals who welcome foreigners with open arms. It's a traveler's dream, but we're going to Plasencia for the food. Salbutes, fry jacks, carnachas, hudut, Mayan chocolate, and rum. Lots and lots of rum. How much rum did I drink that day? I can't remember. But seriously, are you ready for the best Placencia food tour you've ever seen? If so, come with me and try not to drool. Let's go to Placencia, Belize. Today we're joining Taste Belize. Dr. Lira is gonna take us on a tour of this beautiful place. Doctor, how are you? I'm great, how are you doing? Good, good. So tell me, what do you guys do here at Taste Belize? Well, our mission is to make Belize a culinary destination and we've been working on that for over 10 years now. So what we do, we do specialty food tours, we dive into the culture of Belize um, through the different foods that each culture provides. And then we sell all Belizean products here at our shop. So that's our main thing, is to really bring the visitor into the heart and soul of what Belize is about. All our different cultures, our delicious food, and through that we're trying to bring tourism and agriculture and our fisheries all together and kind of uplift Belize economically um, and bring more visitors here to enjoy what we have. Let's try something, let's try yeah, something. Definitely. Sorry, I'm all over the place, but we already talked about this. I was dying outside and they have this delicious turmeric sour soaked beef. You know, here in Placenta it's hot. Is it like this year round? It gets hot? hotter in May. May is the hottest month of the year. They cool me down. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Placentia is a unique village. It was actually the first community in southern Belize to get electricity, and it was because of fisheries. So this is historically a fishing community. All the villages on Placentia Peninsula, which is 14 miles long, it's all about fishing historically. And so this village, at one point, had the second largest fishing cooperative in the entire country. And they were exporting lobster, conch, and filet fish frozen right to Miami. And that was being distributed to companies like Red Lobster in the United States. After a five minute walk, we're at Carmen's. We're gonna try corn foods, which are things made from corn masa, the same dough that used to make corn tortillas. So that's, mm -hmm. this is what we call a cool spot in Belize, which means it's fast food, but they always have a space with some shade where you can sit down and eat. A lot of this food is to go right out the door. People text or call, then they just swing by and pick it up. It's already ready. But for us, we're gonna get to sit down and eat here since we're not in any hurry. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo estás? Listo, tengo hambre. Demasiado. So, garnaches and some salbutes. That's right. Salbutes. What we call corn foods in Belize. Anything made with corn masa is a corn food. So, um, we're going to be starting with those. Yeah. Okay, the garnaches we usually fry it and we keep it for the day for our customers. You know, when they come, we just be ready because we're always busy. So, uh, this is the tortillas for the garnachas. I'm going to show you how to fry it and then we are going to serve it, prepare everything on top and then serve it through. This is the garnachas. We wait until the garnachas are crispy because it have to be like, like the corn shell for the garnachas. This is ready. Ready. Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll remove it from the oil. So you stack them on top of each other? Yeah, just put the coat in the oil. And that's it. I guess there were a lot of retired couples, romantic couples, and then like millennial type. Like 25 to 40 years. You know, it's another, it's another puri, bro. It's another puri. <laughs> oh, yeah, but totally. this one is with masa. Yeah. You'll say, you'll say, it's not a defense, yeah. Mm -hmm. so what is it? It's the corn tortilla. Yeah, it's the masa. Corn flour. This is albutes. We are going to prepare it with chicken on top. You want, you want to do a little Let's do the whole thing, okay. yeah. Okay. It reminds me of a puri, of a 
Indian puri, but this is corn flour that they do by hand, right? So that's the difference. Yeah. Chicken on the bottom. This is a shredded chicken. We stew it. And then we put cabbage on top and then the salsa pico de gallo. And then if, if it's a choice for you, if you want the habanero salsa. The yeah, salsa. Yeah, that's the habanero. Beware of that. Beware, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, like popping. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm gonna get some for myself. Okay, I'm going to sprinkle some in one or two? Hey, do, 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 do one. Do one. Anybody else wants? Yes. Slice? Okay, so I'm going to do it. Okay. okay, so these two are peppers. Mm -hmm. uh, this is um, called the garnachas. This bring um, beans, refried beans on, on top of. These are the, the ones that we just fried just now. They're not just the crispy corn shell. This is cabbage. The same cabbage that we just put on the same end. And the same salute. For the guy. Now is the cheese. Okay. So, this is the garnaches if you want to, somebody hot sauce again. Yes, at least one. You okay. two? Yeah. Two, two. Okay. Garnachas. So I've had something similar in Latin America like tostas, you know? Tostadas. Tostadas, uh -huh. yeah. The very, tostadas very is a difference that this is like vegetarian. But the tostadas oh. bring a um, chicken, the same shredded chicken, the same procedure. Chicken on top, and then the cabbage, the salsa pico de gallo, and cheese. But you bring, this is like vegetarian stuff. But if you want it with chicken, you can add it. Yeah. Uh -huh. We'll go vegetarian today. <laughs> I could do two M, two M, two <laughs> No, no, it's good, it's good, it's good. This one's crispy and crunchy. This one's gonna drip all over the place. You kind of fold it in half like a soft taco thing. And mm. Garnachas is always with beans. Yeah, and it is actually pronounced garnaches. Garnaches, salbutes. Got it. So how do we start? Um, let's start with the garnaches. These are really nice and crunchy, and this is such a classic snack in Belize. It's like two in the afternoon, you want a little something, this is what you're gonna get. Kids after school, you know, just a quick little fast food. Banero and the pico de gallo. So me and her are spicy addicts, so here we go. Love how thin it is. So easy to eat. Mm, it's like a mountain of cheese. What kind of flavors are you tasting in there, David? Tasting spice. Tasting nice beans. Mmm. The corn is nice and crispy. I've had a bunch of these in my life. My mother used to cook a lot of stuff like this because in Venezuela we have some very similar, right? Everything is corn. So we have these like tostas. We also throw some chicken on top of you said that's not the way they do it here because it's veggie, right? Yeah. But if you add some chicken, it's all good too. The spice level is perfect with the habanero. Very, very hot though. With the heat outside and this, whew, I'm ready for the next one. These are my favorite, and Carmen is famous for these. And hold it carefully because it will drip juice all over it's the crazy. damn place. Oh, it's so easily. Mm-hmm. How soft it is inside. Oh, so fresh. Your first salute. Your first salute. It does remind me of some of the dishes I've had in India. Mm -hmm. It's very similar. Because you use a lot of oil in India. Right, yeah. A lot of oily. This is a burrito. Burrito, we put the refried beans on the bottom. And then this is beef that we are going to do. Same thing like stewed beef? Yeah, that's stewed beef. This is the lettuce. And pico de gallo again. Pico de gallo. No, and shredded um, cheese. You this, is, this is a burrito. We wrap it. And some the hot sauce that always there in the Belizean food. <laughs> Go. Yes, we are going to wrap it. This is the burrito. It's massive. Okay, so what are we going next? 
We're going to Omar's Kitchen. This is a famous Belizean Creole spot. So we're going to get some Creole style seafood. Seafood in Placencia. Omar's Creole Grub is in its second generation as a family restaurant. So the son Omar now owns the restaurant. The parents named it after their baby boy when they started it. He was just an infant and now he's running the place. So we're going to meet him. Omar, this is David. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for coming. We do seafood. We're ready, I'm ready. Lionfish tacos. Lionfish tacos. Lionfish tacos. That's really great because lionfish is an invasive species. So this is one way to kind of try to combat them taking over our reef is to eat them. And so that's what they're doing right here. They're helping to support sustainable fisheries. Next for yeah. these shrimp. Oh yeah, for these like jungles? Yeah, these ones come down from the south, down in uh, South My Street. district. And I'm just putting these in some dry blend here that we have. And then we're just gonna basically dump these in the garlic and butter sauce, okay? It says garlic butter sauce. Add some, it some cilantro. Oh yeah, I don't know. Oh, you're you too think, much. Does anybody want to feel the weight of these things? Look at this. Yeah. Monster. So how do we do it? Yeah. So the thing is with these, right? When the lobster season is closed, it's hard to get these. Because they only get these when the guys go diving for lobster. Okay? And these live in the same up in the coral heads like the lobster. So once the season is out, it's almost impossible to get crab. Even though crab doesn't have a season. You know? And then at the end of the night, at the end of the night, we're sweeping up a bunch of toes. <laughs> Hit me. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate the first one, mm -hmm. and I'll let you go at it, okay? This one clean crab. This part is usually hard, I don't know why. Just to get it. And then I also do this part here. And then white part too. Right? And open that up a bit. So I you got some seasoning in there, yeah. This is something I've never seen anywhere else in the world. They'll open the crab claws, but then they'll add seasoning. This did the same thing with stone crabs the other day, too. Okay. Yeah, and then they, they also uh, put it on the grill, right? So, or this time we're gonna put this in a uh, traditional Creole sauce. In a Creole sauce? Yeah. Even better. Ready? <laughs> you gotta work for your food, come on. That's perfect. Huh? Yeah. All right, beat it. You gotta beat it like it owes you money. <laughs> and these two? Yeah, these two, yeah. Yeah. Art. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, really ready, ready. <laughs> there we go. Put some seasoning in that, in that show. So you gotta open it up a little bit. Some seasoning inside. Yeah, when you come here to eat all the time, you hear the pounding. Bang, it's bounding. It's like a That's construction awesome. site. And then, also, some coconut oil. Everything's better with coconut oil. Oh, of course. <laughs> the soy sauce. You notice this sauce is red, right? There's absolutely no tomato in there whatsoever. None. This is the secret. This is called recado or achote. This is a Mayan base ingredient. There's two main plant ingredients in there called uh, there's corn and there's anato. And with that there is they create like a blender of this paste that you see. Yeah it almost looks like mm -hmm. a tomato paste but yeah, it's not. It's not. You want to give it a smell? Yeah. It's nice and smoky. Mm, yeah it's interesting. That smells great. And that's, that's the base for the pork creole sauce. Oh, wow. yeah. That's what this, so I'm just getting a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's mild, it's, it's not even it's like mild. overpowering, yeah. yeah. I want to see what it tastes like with the, with the crab. Yeah. We're going to turn this over. So the other side. Oh my gosh. This is a beautiful crab. This crab is today old. Never frozen. Here we go. First place ready. I have the tacos. I'll tell you how excited, man. It's really good. So you're telling me to put some of this hot sauce? I am. So Marie Sharp. She founded Marie Sharp's hot sauce in 1981, and basically she was making habanero sauce out of her home kitchen. Now she's exporting to 20 different countries. She has been inducted into the World Hot Sauce Hall of Fame. 
Um, she is probably the most successful food entrepreneur in Belize, and she's a mentor and leader for other entrepreneurs in the field, and especially women in business. Well, and this is the hot sauce of Belize, the one you have to try everywhere. That's right, it's and like it's like sauces. our ketchup. You're gonna find it on tables all around the country. We love this stuff. Habanero ketchup. That's right. <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> Ooh, they're hot. Can you mix this or? Yeah, you can give that a little stir. Okay. Habanero is our favorite pepper in Belize, and we like to dash it into almost everything. Okay. You gotta dip, get that pepper. Get that pepper. It's like my training is the pepper. <laughs> Mm. This is a different kind of fritter, right? I like how the batter is. Mm -hmm. Nice and crunchy, fried. The inside, very, very soft. I'm being a hot sauce. It did say comatose heat level. <coughs> Man, heat level, look at that. It's like five X's. I mean, it's not so bad, but once I feel a sweat. <laughs> the best bar food. In Belize we call this a boca. Conk ceviche, conk fritters, this is what you eat while you're drinking a cold one. Mm -hmm. We're the same in Miami. For the sports bar. Exactly. Conk fritters. Can't go wrong with conk. Yeah. We're you know Miami next to the Bahamas. Conk is king. I'm gonna add some more guys. Alright, this is my favorite conk ever. I guess today we're eating a lot. This is like what? What you are eating a lot in San Pedro? You're just gonna eat a lot of all over. We like to feed people here. Here's in touch and the fresh seafood. You want some of this too? Good stuff. Give me, give me some of those sauces there. Some of the sauces there. Mm. 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 It's so light. Good fish. Mm. You know, I wouldn't even notice what this is. You didn't tell me it was that. Lionfish is really light, you know. It's not an oily fish. It's it's kind of light and flaky. It probably would be more popular if it wasn't so hard to clean because you have to be very careful not to cut yourself on one of the venomous spines on the lionfish. Mm. Mm -hmm. Nice thing. Those are some gorgeous primes, man. Let's do it. You got a fork if you want to, uh -oh, let's but do you it. can just get your hands in there. Let's do it like this, guys. When I eat shrimp, I eat it always like this. So I grab the tail, and then you start breaking off the whole shell, pull the head off. I usually go in. There's always some juices in there, right? That's where all the flavor is hiding, right? Garlic butter. That's why they cook it like this. That is nice. It's a massive prawn. A lot of meat. And so here we have massive prawn. I'm gonna do this. I think you just gotta go in here and like pull, cool, right? Like that. This is where we see whether you did a good job cracking these claws earlier. Did I do a good job? I guess we're gonna find out. <laughs> Not really. Look at this. Stop. <laughs> I can crack it like this. Again. That's why we have more. You can. You got a cracker right there. You can get in. Huh. If you really need to. Me too. That's the only thing with crabs. Sometimes not so easy to eat. No, no. Mm. Mm. A lot of meat. This is achiote. Achiote. Pure achiote, or what's called anato. So if you go to southern Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, food from all those regions and Belize. This is everywhere and because it is an indigenous spice. So it actually grows on a shrub. The Latin name for this shrub is pizza orellana. And the little tiny seeds, they're covered with this bright orange paste. This bright orange paste is actually used in processed food. So if you ever buy cheddar cheese that's orange, this is what makes it orange. When you buy like margarine, if you buy margarine, which so I'm sure you don't, it's what makes it yellow. It's a natural food coloring, but it also has its own flavor. 
And so this has been used for thousands of years across Central America and Southern Mexico as a flavoring, as a seasoning. So when you come to Bulis, here we're making a dish, this Creole style crab. It has the indigenous anado that's associated with Maya culture. It also has coconut oil in here that you can taste mm -hmm. and that's associated with the Afro descent aspect of Creole culture. So this is bringing the Caribbean and Central America together in one dish. Where are we going? Which way? We're going this way. We're going to head down and check out a couple more spots, see about some food, see about some drinks. More food and drinks? Brutal awakenings. Let's go. Sorry, I just like flew up here. That's fine, man. Coffee. Give me some good coffee. But we're doing seaweed. <laughs> smells good. Hello, hello. Hi, how are you? Doing well, how are y'all? Seaweed. Yes, seaweed. Nate, we need something to wake up, right? Cold brew. It's the best brew. It's good. Okay, so what we use for our seaweed shakes, uh, seaweed, the coconut milk, vanilla, sweetened milk, and then our base is whole milk. And that's basically with a little dash of uh, nutmeg. And we do freshly grated nutmeg. We add them in these little containers for easy use. And then that's basically the process. And now I'll take you through the process. So we're gonna add our seaweed into a container. Um, and this is our hot water. We're just gonna add enough water to submerge the seaweed entirely. So we're doing it on a smaller scale right now, but usually um, we use a larger container a lot more hot water, and of course, a hefty dose of seaweed. And a little goes a long way with seaweed because once it's hydrated, um, it expands. So the first thing we do is add a scoop of our whole milk. One scoop. Then we add some gold in there, <laughs> the seaweed. Just one scoop. Gold, huh? Yes, sir. A little bit of vanilla, a little bit of sweetened milk. And then what we do is add a little bit of our grated nutmeg. And this is what it's supposed to look like. And then just one scoop of ice. Smells great. That smells amazing. And then making sure it's quality. And then we add to our biodegradable uh, cups. It should have that thick, rich- It's, it's super thick, huh? Consistency, it's almost like ice cream. It does look like ice cream, it's a seed ice cream. And it's a different type of seaweed, right? It's not this green seaweed, uh, it's more brownish. It actually smells great. Oh, this is like a shake, man. Super thick paper straws for this. Wow, it's like sea ice cream. Mmm. <laughs> it's so thick, though. I love the whipped cream, too. I'm a big seaweed guy. This is unique. I've never had something like this in my life. First time. <laughs> People think it's not going to taste good, and then they're pleasantly surprised. Mmm. Also the vanilla there, too. Mm -hmm. Vanilla. Mmm. That would taste more like, like you have a salty, seaweed taste inside ice cream. That's like the best way I can put together, right? The seaweed is what gives it its consistency. That thick, creamy, rich. So seaweed rich. does not. Yes, that's what it does. Without the seaweed, it would just, it would be a lot uh, smoother, I would say, as opposed to that thick, creamy skin You get your brain freeze, though. <laughs> it's like straight up ice cream. It's a slushy, really. Yeah, it, it's like a slushy that hasn't, like, fallen apart too fast. But if you leave it out, it'll melt, right? Like, For sure. 
but it takes a little while longer to melt as opposed to your regular milkshake because again of the seaweed. That's awesome. You gotta try it. So this is a seaweed jelly. Yes. So it feels rehydrated. The rehydrated seaweed. Not my favorite. <laughs> no, that, no way. So you definitely need it in your your milkshake. <laughs> yeah. It's a little bitter. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Thank you so much. Of Thank course. You. And even the seaweed, the coffee's great as well. Definitely come over here and get a cold brew. Try the seaweed cup. That's right, big titty rum bar. Big titty rum bar. <laughs> what? Have a good one. Thank this you so it? much. Take care. That's it. I love this place, Frankie. Hi. How you doing? I'm I'm doing good. Welcome. Thank you so much. So, Frankie, what do you guys do here in terms of drinks? First, we make rum. We make rum. And then we sell rum here. We do classic cocktails, rum cocktails mostly, and we do some of our own signature cocktails, mostly concocted with big titty rum. Get ready, get ready. You have to move your hand fast, 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 and people are rolling like that. You want to use Belize, right? Yes, I want to use Belize. Well, that's a nice little rainbow you got going on there. Frankie. It's a rainbow. It's about happy hour time. I think we're starting on the right point. Ooh. So you sell these bottles as well, right? You sell? And they sell. I'm sure they do. I think he does a rum class that we offer through our website. Oh yeah? Yep. That's great. And it's not just about his rum, it's about rum across the world and the history of rum, the origins of rum. The master class of rum right so, here. So we have four different rums. We have spice, extra dark, habanero, so it's spicy, and then we have the liqueur, right? Let me try spice first. You know, I personally like spice rum. Mm -hmm. You feel the taste. So much flavor. Next up, we have extra dark rum. Oof, this feels. Hang on. <laughs> Mm. Nice, it's almost like a rum stout, like a, a dark, thicker rum. So this is habanero, so it's not spicy. It's a habanero infused rum, it's not macho hot. It's good. Nice. Not, not too spicy. Yeah. Alright, this is gonna be my favorite, I'm sure. I like I like Bailey's. I like is that my style? Mm. Oh, it's great. Mm. Green liquor. What's in here? It's probably spices. The mouthfeel is from the seaweed that you just tasted or saw concocted at Rude Awakenings. It's got carrageenan in it, which is a natural vegetable gelatin. So that's mouthfeel. It also has creme fraiche. Those are the, the heavy body agents in it. It's got Belize rum, Belize chocolate, Belize coffee, Belize vanilla. It also has a touch of crow. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know what it smells like? It's really Nutella. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. I, I smelled it and I was like, wow, this is the nut. Uh, what is it? Nut liqueur? Nut liqueur, yeah. Nut liqueur. Mm -hmm. So it, so yeah. everyone loves a little nut liqueur. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. So for the nut liqueur and the fat pea, it's forty dollars a bottle, and for the other rums, these one liters, right? These are thirty U.S. dollars. Frankie, David, thank you so much, and thank you, David and Nathan, for visiting Big Titty Rum Bar. No, we love it. Thank you. It was amazing. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Thank you as well. Have some good drinks. Okay. Bro, one more spot. I feel good. You doing good? Is it raining? Yeah. Woo, it smells great. How you guys doing? You guys good? This what it's about. Yeah, yeah, that's the, the point. That's why we call the tip of the peninsula. Better Belize. The point. The point. Yeah. Better Belize, he said? Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Hold on the way. This is the main street in Placentia. 
This street. This used to be the main used street. Used to be, used to be. So back in the 1980s and prior, this sidewalk was about half as wide as it is now. There was no back road, what we now call Main Street, didn't exist. And all the hotels, all the restaurants, they were right on here. And then right over here to the left, we have the beach. Over here, we have a few different houses, some Airbnbs as well, right? Yep. And these are local people's homes, the original founding members of this village living here. And in front of that is a hotel. And the next place we're going to is down here. Yeah, we're going to Barefoot Bar, one of the most famous bars in all of Southern Maine. <laughs> so welcome to the Tipsy Strip. We're getting drunk in here. Look at this. This is his boss. <laughs> no, there's only a couple in there. A whole bunch of shops, an art gallery. <laughs> no, it's amazing. It's the Tipsy Strip. <laughs> what do you think? Barefoot Bar. Let's enter. Placencia's unofficial community center right here. Wow, it's an amazing place. Bro, you're the star. You're the star. Right in the damn village. Oh, wow. Yeah. What do we got? Bitters. That's yep. right. Belizean bitters. You guys enjoy. Thank you. This is a shot. Is a you shot. might need your water. We call it the Jägermeister of Belize. Well, you've had bitters. Bitters is better than Jägermeister. Okay. Yes. Welcome right, sure. to Belize. Oh, that was nice. Ice they make cold. their own blend here. Artisanal bitters makers will make blends for different places. Barefoot Bar gets their own custom blend made for this bar for recreational drinking. So it's much less bitter than a medicinal blend. Yeah, it's, But of it's course, not you're so not going to drink that as a shot at a bar because it's so strong. You just take like a little half shot in the morning at home, drink some water. That's a health tonic. Good fit it back, boosts your stamina, boosts your sexual performance, and boosts your immune system. So this is our COVID killer. We use this as preventative medicine. The COVID killer. <laughs> so how many of these are we trying right now? Yeah, that's it, unless you want to. Okay, okay, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. It's like a crazy here. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. We got fried bread fruit. Oh, my bro, favorite. bread fruit, bro. This is one of my favorite things on planet Earth. It's called bread fruit. I had in Trinidad, Guyana, Barbados, nonstop. So, how are we having this fried bread fruit? Okay, so in Belize, we love habanero. We use ketchup, but we like to add our own touch. So, we are going to make a little spicy ketchup. So, so ketchup with the uh, Mary Sharp. Put some ketchup down. And then, of course, Marie Sharps, Ms. Marie's famous habanero, which is made in this district, by the way, only an hour from here. So you got to put that together, and then you kind of give it a little stir, she and you got it. spicy ketchup for your red fruit. So that's how we proceed. So you gotta mix it, guys. I like this. I like mixing spice with sauces. I'm trying. I'm trying. It's okay. Next, I get a big piece of breadfruit, mix it together, spicy ketchup. Mm -hmm. That's how we do it. And this ketchup isn't like industrial. This is just like made by. This is hand, right? Grace brand ketchup. So in the Caribbean, Grace is one of the famous brands. They're out of Jamaica. Mm. And so if you get Grace brand ketchup, it's made with cane sugar automatically instead of high fructose corn syrup, which is what ketchup from the United States has in it now. So it's a bit healthier. Perfect for dipping your green fried breadfruit like we have here. They literally start with the whole breadfruit in the kitchen and they break it down. This is hand cut and deep fried and fresh for us. This is so good. So for me, I'm not a big potato chip guy. I'd rather have solid chips or yuca, like fried yuca. Let's get spice. Mary Sharp. Mary Sharps. Let's get 
there's so many flavors, right? And you can get that on Amazon. So your viewers in other corners of the world, mm -hmm. Amazon. You can even find this at Walmart, believe it or not. My family farm in Toledo district. Um, we have a lot of breadfruit there. So when it's breadfruit season in the rainy season, like in July, breadfruit are ripe, avocados are ripe. I make guacamole, I fry some breadfruit. One of the best things in the world. Fried oh, breadfruit and guacamole off the phone. I have to try it. Yeah, we'll come back anytime, man. And right here we have smoked mackerel. All right, so we gotta squeeze the lime on. Get that acidity in with the richness, the smokiness of that Spanish mackerel. Smoked in Placencia Village, brought to Barefoot Bar, turned into this delicious smoky dip. And of course we want some habanero because we love pepa. We love pepa. I love how you guys say it here too. Your accent is great. I love it. Well, I call it code switching. I can go from American to Belizean. Right? It says so smoked mackerel from right here. It's like when I go to California, I go super valuable. I'm like, what's up, bro? What's up, dude? <laughs> I always do that. Like, <laughs> I do love it. You want to use an oily fish when you're going to smoke something because if you use like snapper, grouper, a white flesh fish, there's not enough fat in there. It gets dried out when you smoke it. Mm -hmm. So you want that oily, fatty, rich fish flavor when you're smoking a fish. The smoke is strong and the fish has to stand up to it. I love it. Good stuff, it. right? Mm -hmm. Mix with the heat. So wow. this will help get you through a few bellicans, you know, maybe some rum cocktails. Barefoot is famous for pouring them strong. Um, and so good times and strong, strong drinks. They like to free pour their drinks here. Who dropped this over here? <laughs> well, this has been a great tour. I love all the food here. Placencia is a hidden gem. Definitely recommend coming out here. You guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, Thumbs up, comment below, subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content, and I will keep eating. And this is fantastic. Nice smokiness. And this morning we're starting off with the traditional Belizean breakfast, which is Fry Jacks. And I'm here with my friend Dr. Lira from Taste Belize. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm good. So what do we do here at Detach? Detach is famous for Fry Jacks. They make the best ones in Placencia Village. And so we're going to get to go into the kitchen and learn how that's done. They're fluffy, they're puffy, they're delicious, and we're going to do that. And they're huge. Yeah. My amazing staff. Hey guys. Morning, morning. morning, morning. That's morning. our head chef, Miss Ruby. That is morning, her Ms. assistant, Miss Julia. And Ms. that's Julia. the second assistant, Mr. Lester. Then this is the fry jack. Oh, they're making some rice. So right over here, that's we just that's made that's the fry jack. So then here it is, right? So a little different. I've seen huge fry jacks. I've seen smaller ones. These are the ones that we had similar with Nutella. We had like a dessert one over in San Pedro. It looked nice and fluffy. Still very, very hot. Just came out of the oil. Wow. And then over here, we have a parata. It's a tortilla. It looks like a parata. It, it looks very similar to the Indian parata. It's a flatbread, right? On the grill. Nice. How many eggs do you crack a day? About six crates. Six crates. Six crates oh my gosh. Fried jacks. Are you are just taking it off the top? You guys have some of the best refried meat in the village because you've got that Very nice. Got your coconut flakes on it. Where's the whipped cream? <laughs> so here they don't just do fry jacks, they do breakfast, right? So they have Belgian waffles, they have eggs. What I love is this beans. These beans are so good. The secret here is they put coconut milk, right? Coconut milk? Oil. Coconut oil. So coconut oil and coconut milk. Once I like reach the size that I wanted, then I cut it in four pieces and then cut it, then I go and fry it in the fire. Strictly with savory stuff. Like even the powdered sugar, it's for tourists. Like the real authentic Belizean fried jack breakfast, nothing sweet. Let's go. That's for him. Right there, Nathan. Thank you so much. And I got one for me too. Some homemade guava jelly as well. Nice. Guava jelly, huh? That's a Placencia specialty. Thank you. Yeah. Johnny cakes. Johnny cakes, yes. I love Johnny, Johnny cakes. Johnny cakes looks like bakes, huh? And this is fried jack breakfast. The original and mine is stuffed. 
That's right. Stuffed with a lot of delicious, savory treats. So you got refried beans and scrambled eggs and meat inside of this thing. Looks like a bomb. And right here we have our breakfast. So we have two different fry jacks, the original and the stuffed. So what do we have in this one? This one has refried beans, scrambled eggs, and meat stuffed inside of the dough, and then they deep fry this thing. Yeah, it's like a monster comparison, right? This is a little more long, right? And super mountain inside. Let's see. This is huge. Oh, wow. Look at all that goodness. It's all mushed up in there. So. It's all mushed up. And if you're eating Good. the traditional fry jack, you don't use silverware. You, you tear pieces off and you do this. You mm -hmm. know, that's how you eat it. It's like doughy, but also crispy. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, basically they're starting with the, they pre-cook the eggs, the bacon, everything that goes inside. Mm -hmm. Then they pat out, this is tortilla dough, flour tortilla dough. So it's the same dough you make for flour tortillas. You pat it out like you're making a flour tortilla. Then you put the pre-cooked filling inside, you fold it over, you deep fry it. So the inside is still gonna be a little doughy. The outside gets nice and crisp. Yeah, so in terms of like what it reminds me of, it's like a, almost like a breakfast empanada. I've never seen it in this size. They also added cheese on top, and over here is like um, what, like a just tomato sauce. Mm -hmm. like a salsa. salsa. No salsa. You yeah. know, you got to get your veggies in there too. Yeah, of course. Everything here is salsa, beans, eggs, right? We call this a Belizean breakfast because you find this in a lot of Belizean homes, either in the form of a tortilla, a flour tortilla, Johnny cakes, or fry jacks. These are all very affordable things to put on the breakfast plate because flour is a cheap staple it doesn't get taxed it's on the list of tax exempt staple foods in this country and so oh. are beans and so is corn and so is rice and so is chicken so those that. that's why we find these things over and over again because these are the most affordable foods for any family and when you do get an opportunity you can mm -hmm. try some johnny cake with some of this guava jelly and this guava jelly is made by Miss Kunchi. Miss Kunchi is one of the grand matriarchs of this village. Um, she also had 10 kids. Um, she's basically like the grandma of a quarter of Placencia. And she makes amazing guava jelly. Um, and that's her guava jelly we have right here. So like basically everybody's related to her in this village? Like a quarter of the village, that's yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. She reminds me of my childhood. I mean, just yeah. like, yeah, having a lot of fried dough. I ate a lot of dough in, back in the day. The Venezuelan dough boy, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, I was. Johnny cake? So it is a bake. Yes, so and you... break baked dough, open it up, and then I just dip it into this guava. Yeah, man, put some guava jelly on there. Ms. Conchi's guava jelly. Coconut, well, right? Yes. Uh, it's not a Johnny cake if it's not made with coconut milk. That was great. It's um, a little dense, a little flaky, but... I love the, the guava. Gotcha, pal. So usually we would take yeah. a knife and we split them right in half and then you like, you can find these sold on the side of the road and they like put a layer of refried beans, put some cheese, and this is like your to-go fast food breakfast, one of the many different to-go fast food breakfast options. Okay. Right? So you could put some beans on there, put some refried beans now real belizean refried beans mm -hmm. they need to be refried with coconut oil and so this particular restaurant they know what they're doing these beans have that coconutty flavor then you would just throw that on the belizean egg mcmuffin right here that's belizean fast food what a beast mm -hmm. so eggs ham roses in here is there bacon the fry jacks but this is the best part of this recipe right here on the beach in Plasencia. Incredible. So you can come here in your bathing suit, have some breakfast, jump in the water, come back out and just relax. This is a real chill spot guys. On this peninsula you can just hang out and enjoy life. Our barbecue no grill spot. So what are you doing there? Lunch special. Well, I'm flipping some chicken here, bud. Got some chicken at the bottom and some ribs on the top there. So this is for the lunch special, right? Yeah. Every Sunday. Yeah, this yeah, right. for 12 o'clock. Yeah, that smells so good. 
Nice and smoky. Oh, yes. Nice and charred. It's getting there. <laughs> wow. Good chicken, some pork ribs, right? Yeah, that's what Smells good, right? Yeah, heaven. <laughs> so next up, we're going to a Mayan village to make some chocolate. That's right, and learn all about cacao farming. And we're gonna have a drink that's like pure chocolate, right? That's like, right. No yeah, sugar. So guys. Like a two five is like your ride or die best buddy. Uh, it's a micro, a new Belizean micro brewery, and it's two five beer. So like you're supposed to have a 2.5 with your 2.5. Yeah, that's our airport right there that you just were filming. It's our great little airstrip. We have two flights coming in from Maya Island Air and Tropic Air. So you can get in at Belize International and then you just fly right down here to Placentia. Easy thing. Yeah, so if you don't want to drive the three hours down, you can easily do that, right? But the drive is an experience. So we're at the entrance road to the Coxcomb Jaguar Reserve and Maya Center Village and this is a Mopan Maya community and we're going to be making chocolate here, the ancient Maya way. Got the whole experience. It's a beautiful time of year to be here this because nice. wow, yeah. these trees, these are called Madre de Cacao or Mother of Cacao Trees. So if you guys don't know, here in Southern Belize they produce some of the best cacao on planet earth in terms of quality. So what are we doing here today? Welcome to our cacao farm. Over 3,000 trees on a 10 acre plot. Yeah. And uh, well, two types of trees. Look at these trees. Wow. See where chocolate This is where it all begins guys, right here. So this one that you're looking at right here, the red one, mm -hmm. this is for a sterile cacao. This variety is not a fine flavor variety. It is more bitter in okay. flavor. This is the variety you find mostly in West Africa. Yeah, I was going to say, okay. this is the one I saw in West Africa. So this variety is fine for making milk chocolate, but it's quite bitter for making dark chocolate. So they do have some of that on this farm, but in Belize we're mostly growing these green varieties. The green cacao is called Criollo cacao. This is an heirloom variety. This is a fine flavored cacao and it's considered to have the best flavor profile of all three cacao varieties. Now there are a lot of different hybrids and cultivars of cacao today, but Criollo cacao and Trinitario cacao, those are the fine flavored ones. That's what we mostly grow in Belize. The red one I see here, this is what I saw in Ghana. So they always have the red, right? This is more, more West bitter. Africa, more bitter. Yeah. Good then, for milk chocolate. And then the bottom ones here, are these dead? Yes, you They're see dead. the hole Those there? Yeah. That is where a woodpecker came a and woodpecker. picked a hole in it and ruined it for us. So a woodpecker destroyed this one. Yes. Because this is an organic farm, there's no pesticides, right? So they're not trying to fend off all those, you know, birds, squirrels, raccoons, etc. Wow, so many trees. 3,000 trees. Oh, it's super Same muddy, huh? Same type of trees. Same time. Green trees. Red fruits. Right fruit, some of them will be right, some of them are not right. But there are different trees. There's a right one here. That's right? A red one right here. Side it out green, then it turns to yellow color. That's when they're ripe and ready. That's when we have this. So this is the green one, it turns yellow when it's ripe. That's right. It's good. The woodpecker just attacked, yes, attacked this it. pod. Yes. You can see it, right there. Like drilled a hole in there. You yeah, can see the right. flesh in there. Yeah. See a nice yeah. little cacao flesh. So you'll get a nice lead in there and then I mean, we can open it. Look at these red ones. Cool. Super they're nice. Ripe, they're not ripe. No, they turn yellow and orange when they're ripe. So they turn orange and yellow when they're ripe. And over here we have more green ones oh yeah look at that one so this is considered also along with criollo this trinitario variety is the second fine flavor variety so that's what we want to use for really high quality dark chocolate and that's what we're famous for in belize is these high quality beans that make fine flavored dark chocolate so here we have the criollo variety so the way you pick this is that you don't rip it off you twist it just like this All right easy Sometimes when I shake these, you feel it. Other ones, you don't. And then he breaks Thank it you. open. Thank you. Up this foot right here, and this is how we open them up. No, no, no other tool except a, a club. And you just tuck them in the middle, rotate a bit, and then they break open. This is the starting of chocolate right here. Oh, right there. Love That's this. where chocolate starts from. This is it. 
Set us out. It won't come out. Oh, Grab a bean, two or two, put it in your mouth to suck on it. Ah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. It's good stuff, right? Mm. Very fruity. It's sweet. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Fruity. Mm. Nice flush. That's and what it is. Very nice flush. Mm. To break through. You can do it if you like to, but it won't be tasty, you know. If, no, once it gets to the bean, but not tasty. But it'll be healthy. Once you get to the bean, it's very bitter. Mm -hmm. It'll be bitter, but not super bitter. But I like the flesh. Yes, the flesh are I taste it. It tastes like banana. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mango-ish. It has a weird type of flavor very in it. Different types of flavor. I got it. It's the whole thing. <laughs> Go ahead. Go for it. It's unique. Mm -hmm. Do your thing, man. It's lychee. <laughs> Bite through the whole thing. So this is what you're eating. What's it seen? That's the inside of the seeds. What's this here? You have to ferment, uh, dry, roast, and then eventually you get to the chocolate making, right? That's right. You grind it after you do the roasting. Once the cacao beans are roasted, then they have to be de-shelled. The shells are removed off each seed, and then that gets ground with sugar and other things to make a chocolate bar. And now we're going to go to the factory to see them making some chocolate. We're going to try some, and we're going to try the super bitter drink. Thanks, Mr. Nancy. Nice so I really appreciate nice you letting oh, man. us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Farm. Thank you so much. We Have appreciate it. Have you. a good day. Thank you, Mr. Nancy. So. Let's go, guys. That was Killing so tasty. It. Killing it. You just wolfed that shit down. I did. I did. It was yummy. This is Southern Belize. So the chocolate factory is upstairs, and right here, we're going to see the process. Hello, how you doing? Good, good. Welcome to Chiang Mai Chocolate. This is where we show our people the way we make chocolate traditionally. No machine involved, everything is done by hand, from the farm to the bean and the bean to the chocolate in your hand. So I will ask my assistant, Roberto Pop, to do this for you to show you how it's done and after he's done and I'll show you the other portion that we do so Roberto please join us as we show our good people here how we make chocolate tradition and are these chocolate nibs or cacao, cacao nibs, nibs. Yes. Cacao so, so these are cacao nibs so this is after roasting so these ones have been roasted here on the open fire so these are all roasted cacao beans and as you can see here it's still pretty much uh, with the shell so these are roasted cacao beans with the shell so what we do is we need to roast them and uh, how we get to this form is really that so you can see here what we can do is so you open them up yeah we can crack open the shell you can really see there's a thin layer of shell on there mm -hmm. And is this edible? I mean, it is. Yeah, but it is. Yeah. Is it tasty? It's dark. It's dark chocolate. Yeah. It's it's like a hundred percent, right? Yeah, you can go ahead. Yeah, you can try. It. Yeah. So you can see this the bean without the shell. Mm -hmm. So if we do this now, okay. you have roasted cacao nibs. So these are now cacao nibs without the shells. And this is what we will be using now to make our chocolate. So we're gonna make chocolate. So I'm gonna try it there. Yeah, you can uh, taste it. Yeah. So 100%? Yeah, that's 100%. Is it the most bitter you can get? Yeah. But also the healthiest? Yeah, so that's really healthy as it is. So we have added some cacao nibs. So let's make chocolate. Super, super, it's like melted. Yeah. My turn, huh? Yeah. So you want to place your fingers halfway there. Halfway, like this? Yeah. Comes behind it. Like a modern pencil, right? Yeah. We call this the chocolate fitness for life program. You can eat all wow. the chocolate you want, but you gotta make it yourself. I mean, the smell, guys. From scratch, guy. using stone tools. You know, the aroma of chocolate coming out of there. Incredible. Stone tools, the traditional way, right? How the Mayans used to make chocolate. 
so I should get these like little pieces, right? Yeah. This is amazing. You can't really smell that chocolate. So. No, I'm about to like lick this thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's that good. It's like it's, it smells so good, bro. And that's ready? Yeah, so, that's 100%. 100%. Yeah, yeah we have uh, sticks here as well. You can give it a taste. That's 100% dark mm. chocolate. Mm. I'm a big fan of like 85%. 85? Yeah. This is good, but it's intense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And over here you have a few of the products, right? So they have 80% cacao. You have milk chocolate, white chocolate. You have cocoa tea. A few different other products here. Mmm. It's very nice. Wow. I literally can just lick this plate. It's that good. Volcanoes in the East. So this was actually traded from the Maya kingdoms in what are called the Maya Highlands, which is now Guatemala, where the volcanoes and the volcanic stone was. Yeah. No, I, have it, I have it every day, bro. Yeah. Every day I have chocolate. So, 100%. 100%. From here, we're going to add some sugar. Some sugar, yeah. So this sugar here is, we make it ourselves. So we do not buy sugar from the stores. We pulverize our own sugar. So when you taste our sugar, you taste different flavors from it. That's why for us, we don't need anything else inside our chocolate. Uh, because we added that powdered form ingredient, what we need to do is we need to add some oil in there. So we're gonna take the oil. So the oil that we have added is, we have added chocolate oil, cacao. So we do some mixing and I'm going to do a little bit more grinding on there. What I love is that they add sugar that they did themselves or they refine it themselves, right? They didn't go to a factory. So it's going to taste a little different. There we go. Wow. That's with the sugar. That's with the sugar. It's good. It's yeah. better. I like it better this way. Of course. We always need a little bit of sugar. That's why I said like 85% is good. 100% is a little too intense for me. Too dark, yeah. Very salty. Mm. Put this all in a cup for me, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you make chocolate bars. Oh, you had some, some notes. Yeah, yeah. So you place the cacao into the freezer, 10 minutes later, it's ready. And then we have chocolate bars. The, the chili chocolate is not something that is common that most people love. It's because they don't really understand what chili tastes like in chocolate but this is how the maya people have it mm -hmm. this is how they enjoy it all the time most of the time the chili is drunk by these special like royalty <laughs> in, in, in the mayan society so they love the chili dark chocolate these are just some of the infused alcoholic beverages that we make for people that are they want to do chocolate in a cocktail form you, you said alcohol, <laughs> <laughs> so alcohol. <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and get some later but for now let us do the traditional maya drink this is how we do it ourselves if we, we've shown you how the, the the chocolate are mixed inside when they're grinding it putting all the other ingredients except no sugar all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to use hot water already pre-made some and we're going to put it in here but the water has to be very hot otherwise the um the the, the oil inside the drink will not be mixing uh, so now we've got our hot water in there again this is our dish, the calabash. We don't have these expensive personally. The Mayans don't know about that. All we know about is trees and wild stuff. Basically, this is a calabash. It grows on a, on a tree and it becomes a fruit. So we split it in half and we made a cup from it. All right? This is what the Maya people use. And then we carve our spoons out of pieces of wood. As you can see, we have our traditional grounded chocolate already made. So we're just gonna scoop out some, right? And we're gonna put it in there, which is probably all we need because this is high high um, powered high power drink and then you mix see then you mix it and mix it until it, it, it starts to um, kind of like a froth and that's where the flavor is because what we're trying to get at was trying to get the oil along with the solids to mix quite quite um, nicely 
with the with, with, with the water so it, it um it mixes and tastes what it should taste like all right so we keep going we don't stop okay all right so now it's basically mixed so now you can go ahead and, and taste your drink so right now i'm trying a pure cacao Drink. Right. Traditional Mayan drink. Traditional Mayan drink is hot water mixed with cacao. Yeah, spices. No sugar. This is how the Maya people always mm -hmm. have it. So I'd say this is like a hot chocolate, but with no sugar. No sugar. That's it. But there are spices in there that gives an added mm -hmm. flavor that you will not find in yeah. regular hot chocolate. It's actually, you know, it's not as bitter as I thought it was going to be, nope. but it's nice. I'll have more. Let's do it. You can add some rum into this if you want. Yes, we can add rum a little later. And these over here are the ones with alcohol, right? Right, those are with the alcohol. Those are more for cocktail, like that. We're trying to market much of the chocolate we make in different forms, in different ways. We even add these real chocolate into ice creams. But this is just a traditional yet. We're gonna go to that a little later. I like this though. Yeah, this is very enjoyable. I guess, I don't know, a cold day in Belize, you have some of this, oh, right? That, that's the best you can have in a cold day. Because <laughs> there is a cold day, right? That, that there is in Belize if you're used to heat. I'm sure there is. I'm sure there is. So the traditional drink that we have here is a drink that is a special drink. It's not something that you can just have everywhere you go. It's served in special occasions, wedding, ceremonies, get together, or when you have your grandparents come to visit you because this is a special treat. This is not something that you do every day. Not like a regular store hot chocolate where you go and go and get it and then it's there. No, it's different. So this is still treated very special, very secretly among the Maya people and especially because we treat it as a very secret drink. You know, this is the drink of the gods. Oh yeah, it's really good. Mm -hmm. There's actually a lot of flavor in there. Rum in chocolate but with my own mix and own flavor and ingredients that are still, I haven't signed a million dollar agreement on yet. <laughs> but this is what Too it is. Funny. So we, we're gonna, we call it Julio's Chocolate Tini. It's similar to that of a chocolate martini, but a lot more better, right? We're gonna give you a taste and look how thick it is, see? And then I want you to try that. Yep. This is the chocolate martini. Chocolate tini. Julio's Tini, chocolate Julio's tini. tini. Feel a little bit of alcohol. It's nice and thick. It's a little cold. I guess I'll have more. <laughs> we, can, we, we can pour more if you want. Yeah, it's a little more, a little more. Is that okay? That's fine. It's so tasty. No, but the chocolate. Wow, that's good stuff. Very nice flavor. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, it's like it's like the ultimate Bailey's, man. Not yet. We're gonna get to that yet. Oh, you're gonna get that. Oh, that's another one. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's really good, yeah. A lot of chocolate, thick. It's good, I'm gonna have to finish it as well. See how nice and thick that is? We'll do another one. Yeah. Salud. Salud. Salud, salud, salud. Mmm. I love the temperature, right? Nice and cold. You've had, you've mm. had this, right? Mm. It's like a... No? Yeah. You're it has a much chocolate. more like a milk chocolatey taste, that one. Mm-hmm. This is like... I would say like a nice creamier. milky chocolate. Yeah, milky okay. chocolate, okay. creamier. So you want to start with the nibs on one? For sure. And these are like 85%? Yeah. So, so you just made this one. Just made it. Cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Breakfast mm -hmm. 100%. 85%. I'm in all of this. I love the chocolate nibs. With that nuttiness to it, it's smooth enough for me. Wow. <laughs> and right next to the chocolate factory, we have tamales. So this stand is right on the street. A lot of truck drivers stop here to get amazing tamales. All right. Yeah, this place is pretty famous for their tamales, so they often sell out, which is why we always reserve ours at Fantastic. It's very similar to the Mexicano tamal, no? Well, 
in that this one is they put the waja and they don't put um, corn husk. And also we do our tamales bone in. So we have inside here a whole chicken wing. Me, this is very similar to that yaka in Venezuela. Mm -hmm. I grew up with that. It's a little different, but always made with corn. Here you said they use this leaf, right? So yeah, this is called a waja leaf. Wow. And it grows wild in the rainforest. And a lot of tamales, people use tin foil now, but they'll still put a piece of the waja leaf inside because it actually adds flavor to the tamal. Of course. But if you see a really traditional production of a tamale, they don't use the tin foil at all. The entire tamale is wrapped in this leaf. Yeah. But here they produce so many tamales every day that they have trouble getting enough of the leaf. So they do use tin foil. But the important thing, of course, is the flavor of the tamale itself. So here you'll notice the orange on the inside. That is, again, the pure atnado or chiote paste that you also saw in the crab. That is in here to give that flavor. Let's try this. Mm. Gotta get that habanero in there, too. Love the chicken. Mm -hmm. It's crazy the habanero, smell it. Pipes. Very potent. So I'm gonna go a little wild and habanero right there. Always habanero. That's what they like here. Nice spice. Oh, it's hot. I love how it's like super dense. It's almost spongy. Mm -hmm. And this is only two fifty, huh? Dollar twenty five. Tamales are one of the cheapest but most delicious foods you can get in Belize. And uh, it all starts very early in the morning. So by the time we come and tamales are ready, they've been working on these for hours and hours because you have to cook the corn, you have to get it milled, you have to cook the masa, then you have to cook the chicken, you have to assemble the tamales, you have to steam them, and then we can have one. So there's a lot of work behind every tamal, but despite that, they're still very affordable. It's one of the cheapest meals that you can get in Belize right here is a good tamal. Well, I love it. Super economical, nice, easy lunch. They also have salbutes, they have burritos, they have vernaches, but we came here for the tamales. So good, so fluffy. I personally love it with this. Some nice spice around right top. Sorry, sorry. Picante. <laughs> Guys, so that was the morning. Now we're gonna go back to my hotel, which is Naya Resort and Spa. Today we're gonna be exploring Garifuna culture. So, doctor, tell me what are we doing here? So, we're in Sainbite Village. This is the Garifuna community on Placencia Peninsula. Um, and we're gonna be going to the Obafu Drum School and we're gonna be making an iconic Garifuna dish that's called Kudut. So that's our plan for right now. Perfect, Kudut. Let's go right here. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. How you guys doing? All right, guys. Good man, good man. This oh, is man. Kim, so nice. this is Bobby. This is David, this is Nathan. I love your hair, by the way. Oh, thanks. Her hair is awesome. Nathan is the producer, David, you know. They were the ones when I when I messaged them, they're like, we watch them on YouTube. No way. Yes, yeah, man. Every time, them. man. No way. Yeah, man. Oh, you're too kind. See you, resting man. Panama, Panama. So what is this? This is this is a, this is a greater. This is a, or what? This is what we do for cassava bread or grating the coconut to make the oil. It's been raining for oh. all, over 125 years. It is 125 years old. Yes. 125 years old or more. Or more, yeah. So each uh, rock has to be made itself. Yes. 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 You got to tap it, break it this, to the size, and then tap it in to make a sharp point that will create. Mm -hmm. And Bobby, sharp. what do they call this in the Garifuna language? Egi. 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 This is the great time. So green plant. Yeah, it's a good person. It's more. The only tree are we after all. Let's mm. start with the plantain because the plantain it usually depends on the texture of the plantain. You can know if it's hard or it's soft. So with this one, it usually takes about 20 minutes because the plantain is actually soft. So this will take about 25 to 20 minutes to boil. Just take the skin. Take that 
top and the bottom off and put it into the water to wash. So how many of these are going to do? And with that egg, we're going to feed all five of us. And we're also having fresh snook. So the fish we're going to have is fresh snook. We have the coconut peel already. So this we're going to crack the coconut with the hammer after peeling the plantain. So we're going to wash it, then we're going to boil it. Hot water is on. So in the water we add um, at least half a teaspoon of salt. Ooh. Just waiting for the plantain. And then the plantain goes in there. 20 minutes or so. It should be soft okay. and ready to get cooled down because you got to cool down the plantain first. So the water is boiling. Mm -hmm. So we're just waiting for her to finish the, the eight plantains and we're going to throw that in. Yep. 20 minutes later, we'll be ready. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to mash it. Yes, man. Wash it up. Mm -hmm. Just washing it. Washing it. No skin from the plantain on it. These green spots because it's from the skin. So we just take it off. Here we add it into the hot water. So then from here, that's when the 20, 25 minutes the countdown starts. So for us to make sure that it's cooked through and through, we use the fork to poke it. So when it's soft, that means it's done. Then we take it out of the hot water. Then we put it into a container with a cover or we leave it open for it to cool off. For that will be like about 15 minutes. Then after that, we start our hunger. Normally just that spike is for you to just strike it down and you snap straight through. And wow, that's the husk, right? Yep. So this is what we cook with. It's funny, I've never seen that. It has a little face on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? It looks like the Moana coconuts. East coast of Africa and then crossed over to West Africa and then came over to the Caribbean. Just sideways. Then it's tearing it off. Yeah. Sideways. So I'm husking yep. it. Yeah. This is like a life jacket for this thing. Andale. Ahí estamos. Listo. So here it is. I did it. You did it. <laughs> Step it on the thing. side. And then I gotta like break it again, right? Yeah, the same thing. Same procedure. Same area. Yeah, same. Same procedure. Then you twist again the same thing. Okay. Yeah. And you know. Thank you. You do it one more in the middle. One more in the middle, huh? Mm -hmm. It's tough. Husky. That's how it goes when you work for your meal. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to work for the meal. <laughs> oh man, it's tough. Okay. Why not? Twist Rip it. it? Yes. You pull this guy out. So this is dead, right? So the coconut is dead and the husk is what it uses to like transport across oceans. That's a life jacket. That's a life jacket. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Right there. Coconut. Right. That is how you ask a coconut. Voila! That's so quick. Shame, David. Shame. <laughs> so this we're gonna pound the green and the ripe plantain together. So this is just a sweetener for the for the green plantain. And you can tell that this plantain has been on the concrete concrete for a while. So that's why the black spots. Because the green plantain, if you notice, it's already have a yellow color to it. So that means it's already almost it close to so. finish. If we cook it together with the coconut milk, we won't find our okra, so we cook it separate. So that's why we just steam it along with the plantain. And then you add it to the and bowl we at add the it, end. Yes, we add it into the dish at the end. So we just call cut. it okras in yeah. Indonesia. What do they call it in Karifana? Nehu. <laughs> it's always that like a like what's it called sticky gooey, gooey yeah. slime. Well, it's slime. It's slime. This is slime. This is slime. You know, it's funny. <laughs> so we put it in there. Meat. Oh, you take it off like that, huh? Because I already cracked it, so it's just a shell. I've never seen this. 
and just use the tip of your knife. Just waltz your way through. That's some good flesh. That's perfect for grating. Oh, She's gonna cut a spoon. Nice. All right, just to scoop it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Nice, nice, very sweet. Yes, this is soft. Some people call it tender coconut, flesh of coconut. It's this meat. Young right? coconut meat. From the tree to you. <laughs> Milky sweet. <laughs> One more. <laughs> it's a natural spoon. Just get in here, break it all up. Just like that. And just go in. Mm -hmm. Super filling. Mm -hmm. Sweet and tasty. And that spoon is older than you. Mm -hmm. What? That spoon is older than you. 37 years old? <laughs> what are you talking about? The invention of the spoon. The invention of that spoon is older oh, than the you. Oh, the invention. Yeah, yeah, the invention, of course. Just make this morning. That's habanero, carrots, onion, and cilantro, and vinegar. The habanero? Yes. It's about it hits you. Be careful. I'm gonna drink it. No, you can't drink this. This is too much. No, 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 no pickles. No habanero. Oh. He's, he's done. This is how they look when, when it's done. It's got a nice bright yellow color and it's soft. And you still have to wait until it's all cool so that we could beat it in the hana. Now we're gonna leave this to cool off for about 15 to 20 minutes. After it's cool off, then we're gonna pound. But in the meantime, we're gonna grate her some coconut so we can make the milk. Yeah, make some lasuso. Lasuso. And grating on this grater, you have to be very careful because the teeth are very, very sharp. One slip, and you'll see bloody Mary. Coconuts came from when they came to the Caribbean. They've actually created the genetic history of coconuts. There's a, I found a paper about that where they were tracing the genome, and that's why they know that there were two centers of domestication for coconuts, the Indian Ocean and the South Pacific. And the coconuts that are in the Caribbean, they came from West Africa. That's it, huh? Yeah, that's it. I'm just going to bring it down to finish. Add a little bit of water. So what is a snook? The snook is a is a midwater feeder. Uh, uh, it, it feeds on live bait, sardines, uh, fries, and so. So you normally catch them trolling. Yeah, I can tell it's a barracuda looking fish because it's like more same like a fish meat, steak. The yeah. same white meat. Nice Bobby, you ready? Yes, man. Dude, I'm excited. It's gonna be good food. Yeah. Cooking for those from scratch. Preparing to string. So then you squeeze. So with this one coconut, we'll just do two squeeze. That looks so good. Oh, so you add more water? Yeah, we just add a little bit more water. Pour it in here. So from here, when we're finished with this, we have some chicks. They're gonna love the coconut. We just give it to our friend so he can feed it to our chickens. Or to your up, chickens. And mix it up with the corn. Love it. It's gonna be some tasty chickens. Mm -hmm. Over. Ooh. It almost looks like a fish chicharron right there. <laughs> right? Yeah. And nice and crispy. And then again. That's it. 
So you're adding all these ingredients to what? All of these ingredients, the onion, the cilantro, the fresh okra, the oregano, all of this is gonna go into the coconut milk. So the thinner I cut these vegetables, the better for me, because these are the ones that play a big role, because the coconut milk doesn't need much to cook. So whenever the veggies are soft, so that's within 20 minutes. So now we're going to put the veggies into the coconut milk. When these veggies are soft and cooked, the fish will accommodate the veggies in the coconut milk. So the idea about making the milk creamy is to keep it moving. You got to keep it stirring, keep it moving so it doesn't get cuddly. You know, you don't want to make coconut oil because when, when you leave it to sit, that's when they start going towards coconut oil. Put in the okra into the lasus, into the gravy, into the coconut milk. You didn't want to put it in there because you want all to fall in pieces. And these in for pounding. Now this is for the hodo part. Now we're going to start slow because I don't want to spill our shit. I became the Thor of Fufu. <laughs> <laughs> you can put your hand in there while I come. There, I'll do it. <laughs> so this is only the beginning, right? After this, she's gonna add some of the sweet plantain. Yes, we're gonna add the ripe one. Pound it some more. So how long did you how long did you take this? <laughs> 25? 25 minutes? 20, 25 minutes. Oh, it's a lot of beating. Into the lasso. We will let this sizzle for like five, ten minutes, and we will be ready to eat. So next up, we're adding the ripe plantain. So turn it in. Right there. So now because it's very soft, so I have to be careful in it. So in 2021, I traveled uh, West Africa. I went to Ghana and I saw this every day. It was actually more intense because you have like 50 women going to one thing. Like This is just uh, one. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. This is different. And there. That's it? Yeah. Perfect. It's a big fish. Yeah, probably. Don't be afraid to ask for a second round. You know, you don't eat this with a spoon. I mean, you can, but that's not the right way. <laughs> you take this, finger uh, eating. You dip it in there. Mm -hmm. You take your thumb and you pull a little bit of meat off of this fish. Give me an explanation. So you have Ooh. a bite with the fish, with the meat. You dip it in the lasus. Mm. Mm -hmm. I love the combination. Mm -hmm. Everything is fresh. It's a little sweet, a little fishy. Love coconut. Oh, and the okra too. Bite in here. Niceness. Mm -hmm. What a dish. So good, right? This is one of my favorite dishes in our country. Is hudu. And it doesn't matter what your culture is. Everybody in Belize appreciates a nice hudu. No, I love how you can just get the... I guess this is just smash plantains. You just drench it or just let it soak up like coconut. Mm -hmm. All right, see that. Dip it in there. Dip it in your lasus. Mmm. Well, on the fish. Fingers are made before forks. Mm-hmm. There's also a lot of enzymes in the fingertips mm -hmm. to help break down food. And then, of course, we're gonna throw some pepper. Mm -hmm. We have our pepper mm -hmm. option. They nice. call onion sauce in Belize, but of course this is full of habanero. 
Uh -oh. Got vinegar to help cut a little bit of the richness. Maybe a little bit here. I'll have to get tiny. We're just gonna put a little spicy vinegar on there, it's and it's gonna make a huge difference in the flavor. It's, it's a really nice compliment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, this is like happy food. <laughs> Comfort. Happy anger. Mm -hmm. It's the best dish I've tried in the country. Semeti. 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 Semeti hudut. Mmm. I love the coconut. It's like a nice coconut soup. Mm -hmm. we'll from scratch to finish. So how did you learn how to do this? Your mother, I'm sure. Right? Grandmother. Grandmother. Peppa get you? Peppa get you? Ali Elai. Ali Elai. Learning your language. Wow. Coconut, man. I love coconut. Mm. Oh and, and it's what makes Belizean food Belizean, you know? Like how yeah. we stand out, in, because in Mexico and Guatemala, they don't use coconut. Mm -hmm. Except if you go to a Garifuna village on the Caribbean coast of Guatemala. Otherwise, the time they, use. they don't use, like, they don't use coconut. So, so I've been to Livingston. Mm. I've been to um, Florida. Which has, right. Livingston has a Garifuna culture. Mm -hmm. A lot of people in Belize here are Garifuna, they might have relatives over, uh, we say across, mm -hmm. across the Bay of Honduras <laughs> in Livingston. To across the Bay of Honduras. Yeah, yeah well then you got, you got these old fishermen back in their young days. Mm -hmm. They had a wife over there and a wife, wife over there. Yeah, yeah. Your pa, your pa did that? Yes. Yep. Your pa yeah. had a wife over there and a wife over there. Cheers, man. Cheers, cheers. Right, the whole Niceness. thing. The whole thing. That was a massive fish. Man, you killed it. I killed it. I, killed I it. think he wins that way down filming. It was good. That was good. This was the best. Congratulations. This dish is best food in Belize so far, right? I'll, I'll tell you, it yeah, blew away every other dish. Yeah, because wow. you can't beat it when you make the coconut milk from scratch. Plus the fresh fish. Fresh fish, uh -huh. fresh Pounded herbs. The plantains. Yeah. I, mean, I everything remember. Local, organic. You remember what I told you, David? That in Belize we say when you cook on a wood burning fire hearth, you're gonna get the best food. Well, you see, you see? the best food. Fire heart. Yeah. Yes. Cook First with a hundred percent fire love. heart. That's the oven and everything in one. All in one. All in one. All, All in one. one. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Sereme, my friend. Sereme, that's how you say thank you. Sereme. Sereme, thank you so much. We just arrived here at my hotel, Naya Resort and Spa. This is where I'm staying in Placencia. It's only like a 15 minute drive north of the city, of the town. And right here we have the beach homes, right? I have a one bedroom. We have a pool right in front. We have the beach right there. Let me show you the unit. Here you can come. Relax, jump in the pool, sunbathe. Right here we have the living room. We have a couch, a chair, we have a kitchenette, TV. Over here we have the master, master bedroom. Love this place. Super beachy, right? Same time, mixed with that classic modern look. Here we have his, hers, toilet. We have a bathtub. Beautiful, just laying here, relax with this garden outside. And here we have a shower. The shower is an outside shower. So here's the shower. Let's turn it on. This is the only shower they got. This is what we got to use. And we're actually really, really high up. If you see up from outside, we're like 15 feet up. And now let me change. So I'm going to the beach. All right. Change. Let's go to the pool. Let's get up in here, right? Woo! It's cold. Oh. All right, let's go to the beach. Oh, it's cold. Let's go to the beach. It's 
So that was our day here in Placencia. This is Naya Resort and Spa. Definitely stay here when you're in Placencia. I highly recommend them. They have the 1981 restaurant upstairs. They have downstairs the bar and grill. They can have breakfast, they have the pool, they have the beach, must visit. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, thumbs up, comment below. Subscribe to my channel, I'll see you in the next one. Let's jump in the pool. Today we're starting off with tamales here at Bertha's, the best Belizean breakfast on the Hummingbird Highway. It's a three dollars, three Belizean dollars per tamal, and they also have over here some pepper, which we have to try. So that's seven dollars Belizean for this hot, spicy pepper. So I'm gonna take this as well. Okay. Take one of these. Okay, so two tamales. Okay. Tamales, tamales. So whatever this is, so seven plus six, don't have enough here. And right here we have my tamal. Look at this, guys, it looks beautiful. So there's a nice gravy on top. It's a nice corn filling. And then you also have chicken in this one? Yes. So chicken, yeah. corn, and a spice. It's made out of corn and chicken. The gravy that is on the top, and Belize would call it the call. 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 Right here we have the tamal. So it's corn dough. They steam it in a banana leaf, so it gives it lots of flavor. This one has gravy and it has chicken on top, right? Ooh, it's nice and hot. Mm -hmm. Oh, super soft. I like the gravy. Nice spices here. Mm -hmm. What I like? There's lots of chicken in this one. See, yesterday we had one, and I think it was lacking chicken, right? This one is good, yummy. Mm -hmm. The gravy on the side, she gave me nice spice. Ooh, habanero. So you mix this. So I like this. Mix this up. I'm a little wild with breakfast. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, spicy. You get the banana flavor? So good throughout the whole thing. Ooh, good red chicken. It's a great meal. Super affordable. So like I said, it's only three Belizean dollars, so one dollar fifty cents. And I highly recommend buying the pepper from her. You know, I bought this to get home. Support the community. Only three dollars and fifty cents in the US. You know what? But I'm my David's been here hot sauce. A little bit. Right there. Ooh. Doing a little ham today. Have an exciting day ahead. We're going to San Ignacio. Oh yeah, it's spicy. I feel like my sauce is spicier than this sauce. Eating every last piece. Great breakfast. The end again to the bone, right? I love the gravy. That's great. Gravy's good. It's nice. It's a light gravy. Very rich. And that's it, done. And what I love about this place is where we are, right? Literally right here on the highway. So when you see this, Bertha's Best Belizean, Fai Hait Tamales. And this is Miss Bertha. So I, I think that's her daughter, of course. This is the highway right here, Humbert Highway. So no matter what, on the way from Placencia, making your way to Bormen Pan, you'll see this place. So Bertha's, let's continue this road trip. I'm excited. Still have about two more hours to get all the way to San Ignacio. So a lot of times you said there's a lot of monkeys in this area, right? Howler monkeys and spider monkeys. Oh, howler and spider? Yes, wow. The common one is the howler monkey. You can hear them from far. Very loud, little animals. So I've actually seen howler monkeys in Costa Rica. When I went bird watching, I saw a bunch of howler monkeys. I've seen a few spider monkeys in my time too. It's amazing, it's amazing. I love the rainforest. Yeah, and what I love about this country is its infrastructure. So the roads are paved, everything is perfect. Again, English speaking country. And this, it's truly like changed completely from coast to mountains. And we're getting to a whole different section of the country. This is going to be Mayan culture, completely different from the coast, right? Plus, this is less touristic, this is more authentic. All right, Dave. We are arriving in Balbopan. This is our capital of Belize. Belmopan, it's Bel for Belize, Mopan for Mopan Maya. It's Belmopan. I did not know that. So just, again, 
police city is not the capital of police. Round about here, you make a right, you go straight to Belize City, you make a left, you go towards the border with Guatemala, and that's where we're going, to San Ignacio. From this um, Ronda boat um, to San Ignacio, it's approximately 45 minutes drive, or an hour at the most. All depends on the traffic. Stop at a gas station here to see if they have any street food. Hello. All right, so right here in the stall, they're making huge burritos. So they put a little tortilla, right? Put it on the grill right here, in the pan. It almost looks like the one they use for dosa in India. And then she keeps flipping it, she flips it, it's not pretty thick. And then from there, she puts it over here. And the burrito is very simple, right? It's uh, beans, stewed chicken, they got cabbage, they have cheese, and then you can add some spice. And she's gonna actually give me a small taco because they have a very, very thin tacos, corn tortilla as well. And it's three for one Belizean dollar. So 50 cents you eat. Super nice, thin tacos, very light. Mm. Love the spice. Oh wow, that one is no flavor in here. And the stewed chicken, moist, sick, dripping. Oh yeah, this is very good. Cool. For only 50 cents, definitely worth it. So she's not charging me. It costs one Belizean dollar for three. Mira, amiga, te dejo esto. Gracias. No, sí. Sí. Gracias, gracias, gracias. Muy amable. Always support, guys. Always support. Gracias, amigas. Cuídense. Hasta luego. And the cool thing about this area of the country is they speak Spanish, which is great. All right, let's go. Let's continue this road trip. After about a 30 minute drive, we've entered San Antonio. This is a Mayan village, and here we're gonna see some more food making. Ah, man, how you doing? Good to meet you, sir. Good to meet you, too. Good to meet you. So, what are we doing here? All right, so first of all, welcome to our beautiful place, Ujanal Masewal. Right, so the word Masewal is actually a word that the Maya call themselves, right? The word Maya came onto colonialism, right? When the Spaniards colonialized the Mayas. So, the Maya call themselves Masewales, right? So, that we're trying to promote that word. Right, so Ujanal Masewal means Maya food. So today we'll be learning the authentic Maya cuisine, right? A food that has been cooked for uh, years. And um, if you see in the ancient Maya iconography, we'll have tamales. There's actually a glyph for tamal, right? And the Maya to say it was fish tamal, deer tamal, it was turkey tamal. So they would put the turkey, you know, and they, they would actually draw the whole animal on top of the glyph. So it's like that there, right? So we'll eat have tamales, but today we'll have tamales the way that our grandfathers used to do it, right? Which is chaya tamales and we'll have beans tamales, right? So we'll have a hands-on authentic experience in the Maya cuisine. See you're Frank. Yes, sir. Look at this place, awesome. Again, open air. <laughs> Bring me the fire. How are you doing, sir? Good, I'm Salah. Good, good. <laughs> David, pleasure. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? I'm Patricia. I'm doing David, good. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So we have chaya and we have you know cilantro, right? So this mm -hmm. we call it the wild cilantro. This cool cilantro. Yes, yeah, so this yeah. is culantro. It's a Trini favorite. We have the rose pepper. We only use it for taste. Oregano, mm -hmm. which this is very good in, in the escabeche we'll be doing, right? And we also have the spicy ones, bird peppers. These are very spicy. Oh, the bird I choose. Yes. The bird I choose from India, dude. Yep. Okay, so you said this is very spicy. Very spicy. Like, too spicy. Too spicy. This is the spicy that we have, actually. No, no. Should I try it? <laughs> oh yeah, that is spicy. <laughs> All right. Now I need some water and some milk. Ooh. Oh, that's, that's spicy. <laughs> Today we'll be having chaya tamales. Chaya tamales. Right, chaya tamales. So we are starting with the makal. So we have the makal which is raw here, right? So it is a root. Some that we dig juice. it out and wait for the tree to be like a year mature and then from there we grate it from grating it we add the spices right we have black pepper salt right so add that and then we fry it so this is how it stays so this is the tzahbi makal right so which is the fried makal we call them fritters and this is a snack which we start mm -hmm. it's almost like condensed chips Tastes very similar. Wow, that's salty too. I'm getting it right here. Mmm, yummy snack. Healthy, right? Very healthy. 
native to around here. So this is what we use a lot. We'll be using this for this cabeche. So this is the juice that we, will, we you just had as well, right? So if you want to taste it, we'll cut it in half and see how sour it is. Sour orange. Mmm. It's sour, but it's meaty. Mm -hmm. Just like an orange, but way more sour. I mean, I love the citrus though. So basically, we have the leaf that we'll be roasting, right? So this is just a demonstration of how they cook it, right? So we'll get the whole process, but here, as you saw, everything that we try to collect from the tree, we try to use it, right? So the stem from the leaf, that is what we use as a cushion, right? And then from there, we add some of the leaves left over to put at the bottom, right? And then put the tamales on top. So right on top, then we cover it with another leaf. So that gives it like a smoky taste, right? Yeah. So from there, we add some water to steam the tamal. So right. you're steaming it and in banana leaves always, Yes, right? <laughs> yes. So we have the masa, and then from there, we'll cook it apart. And then when, we, when the corn dough is cooked, then we'll just bring the chaya and mix it together. Wrap it around and cook it from there. Fantastic. Right? And then this is going on top of there. This is going on top of All there. All right, so can I do it? Yes, yes, sir. Sure. I'm cooking for the first time ever. Aki? Sir. It's shining water now. This is hard work, guys. Mm -hmm. How long does it take? Almost like 20 minutes. 20 minutes and then we're going to eat? Oh, I love it. <laughs> it's called fast food, Mayan style. <laughs> Watch out with the fire. The fire is intense. Ooh. Look at the eyes. Bring yourself some goggles, right? Firefighter goggles. Or <laughs> some of these. Oh my gosh, that was perfect. It was perfect. He's got experience it's with spicy. those, yeah. yeah. I love experience. <laughs> He chopped a whole tree. So this is a banana leaf. Whole banana yeah. tree. Yeah, we will be doing. I love this. Yeah. This is like in India. We use this as the plate. Oh you know? yeah. In southern India. Okay, Tali. Who is roasting it, bro? Slowly, till the color changes. Little. Never seen that before. I've never seen anybody roast a banana leaf before. <laughs> That's the first for me. That's it. Yeah. Maybe this is the size that they, they will be using to wrap the tamales. We are making a onion sauce. We roasted the pepper, added some lime juice, salt, and now we are crushing the pepper. And that's it? Yeah, then we add the onion. Here we have the onion sauce. <laughs> You're just cleaning the banana leaf, getting it uh -huh. prepared for the tamal. I am mixing the masa with the chaya. It's already cooked. Now just to mix it good and then it will make the little dough. So first we start doing this. Okay. Start that. Cover it. Mm -hmm. And start over. Yep. Basically press it down. Mm -hmm. right. And then you press both sides. And then you close it, right? And this goes like this. Yes. Like that. And it's done. It's my tamal. <laughs> Mine's the square one. <laughs> this is straight square, dude. <laughs> so what are you making there? Tomato salsa. And we will add some cilantro, some salt, and some onion. This is to have with the tamales. Tomato oil. Add some water. Yeah, just try this. A little bit like of the hand. It's actually so fresh. I like the cilantro. Mm -hmm. Wow, nice salsa. It's super tasty. You have the seeds and tomatoes in there. Nice onions, cilantro. You can drink this like a soup. All right here we have the tamales. The tamales is ready. Here we go. Yeah. Lunch. Here is cabeche for lunch and chaya tamales. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Chaya tamales. And there is this sauce. We have onion sauce. We have tomato sauce. You can have it with your tamales. And with your you know what we like to do is when we have our tamales, I would prefer it with the salsa. This one, the salsa. It is very good, right? So just put it on top. It looks nice, man. Super fresh salsa. Yes. Made right here. Freshly made, right? And everything that we try to get, it's very fresh, right? So you have the tomatoes. Look at that. Nice amount of tomatoes right there. And then after that, what I'll do is I'll go in here and open this up, right, like this. 
It's different. Shaya, so it's more like a herbal corn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like it. Mm -hmm. Super earthy, right? Green. Yep. Then this will give it um, a very good taste, right? When it mix the... Mm -hmm. The tomato salsa? Yep. Yeah, it's a nice burst of tomato. Mm -hmm. I love the textures on this one. It's actually a little softer than the ones I've had recently. Exactly. And this is spicy, right? Yeah, add some spice, right? Some onions, just like that. So this is habanero, not that bird pepper. Bird pepper is <laughs> spicy. Spicy. I think it needs it though. I feel like this tamal, it has a lot of flavor, but this extra, it's like every every time you add something, it's an extra punch, you know? Exactly. So that's the point, like, oh, in the, the salsa, right? The tomato is roasted, like, right on top of the fire, right? You put it on top of the coal, and then that gives it, like, a very smoky taste to the tomato, right? And adding cilantro, onions, you know, and black pepper, it just combines everything, and it's just amazing. Depending on the region you are on, so we have this, in San Antonio, we'll call it boyos, right? But to generalize it, it's tamal, right? So the Maya, when they made their boyos, I mean, ancient times, they would just call it tamal, right? But depending on the region, like this would call a boyo. So tamal can be of meat or without meat, right? So when it's without meat, we have a boyo, right? And the tamal is actually what we call tamal in our version, is that we will sieve it, right? So it's very jelly. The tamal is very jelly, right? And it has meat inside, and um, it's a little bigger, and it's puffy, right? So boyos is basically hard, just masa and chaya. Vegan version. Vegan version. We started with the tomato. So the par first process we do, bring the tomatoes, put it right on top of the coal, right? And it stays a little black, you know, it starts to cook, and then add a little coconut oil on top. That just gives it the taste. While it's um, on top of the coal, it gets black and it gets very smoky, right? From there, take the peel off, then add it on a, on a plate, add onions, add cilantro, culantro, add black pepper and salt. Perfect combination, right? Then from there, we just put everything together, you know, mash it together, and the flavors, right, just come into one. And when you put it on top of your tamal, perfect. We have chicken, but we can also use game meat. Right, so the armadillo, the, the meat is very similar, it tastes a little like smokier. So again, the chicken, we boil it, add some spices while boiling it first, right? Then from there, we just shred it into smaller pieces and then set it on coconut oil, right? While frying it, add some lime juice inside or either the sour orange. So that gives it a very nice texture, right? And just the, the taste, right? Add some lime juice while it is frying. And then we add the onions, black pepper, and then add some salt. Perfect. And then we have it with our tortillas, served with tortillas, right? It tastes better. And the tortillas has a very, like, um, very smoky taste as well. You know, everything that we cook, it depends on where you do it, right? You saw the fire heart. That gives it a very, like, extra touch, you know, to the taste. The tomatoes, man. The smokiness, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Everything made on the fire heart is better. That's what we say all the time. Fire heart. Beans especially. Mm-hmm. Very good. Okay, so next up we have the escabeche. So we have escabeche. Escabeche. So normally you'll get the escabeche in Belize in a soup, mm -hmm. right? But the version that mom does is a dried escabeche, right? So same ingredients. The only thing is that it is dried. To eat it with tortilla is perfect. But then when we add the sauce, Gives it an extra touch, right? Yeah, I'll add some sauce for you. Yeah. Thank you. On both? Yep. Right there. No. Exactly. I'm gonna put some of this on mine. Let's see this. A nice freshness. And then, if you want some nice spice. Hi. Yep. Good enough? Yes, sir. I'm gonna go in. Exactly, and then we eat it like a taco, right? Like a taco. I, I love like this. A taco. Exactly. Cheers, Ooh, babe. look at that. This drips. Mm -hmm. It's like pulled dried chicken mm -hmm. with some spice. I love the crunchiness of the onions, the taro, or the tortilla. It's smoky. Yes. But it's still nice and soft. You can taste every single bit of it when you take a bite. 
You know, it's cabecho what gives it like the the highlight mm -hmm. is the lime, right? You can taste it when yeah, it's there, yeah. like with, with the sauce, the tortilla, right? mm -hmm. perfect. It's fantastic with the spice. Do you eat this every day? Almost every day. Almost every day. Part of our breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Unfortunately, in Miami, we don't have any good Mexican food. Mm. But I'm looking for tacos every day. Every day. Why not, right? Mm. Nice lunch. I like the whole setting here. Open air. I would love to have this in my backyard. Right. Yeah, man, chill. You have the garden right there. Exactly. Breeze coming through. All the spices are local, right? It's all yeah. come from the garden. Yeah, it's just back here. Mm. So all our vegetables, everything you're gonna see here, actually we get it fresh from this garden and we take it up to the table. So what you ate, uh, David, is was gotten from here. Farm to table, mine style. This is atole. It's from made from the cornmeal, which is dissolved piece of the masa inside of the water. Then put some water to boil. When the water is boiling, we just add the dissolved masa inside and just mix it. And when it, it's starting to boil, take it out and just drink it. So it's just a corn drink and it's thick. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. It's like gelatinous in a way. Like a, almost like a jello. <laughs> you can add sugar in it if you like. Mm. This is good, but it is very little taste, right? So you add sugar, so add some sugar and mix it. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Way better with sugar. Yeah, but it's super thick. It's gonna fill me up. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. It tastes exactly like porridge. Mm -hmm. I remember having some of this in Ghana. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so pretty really nice. But it's too thick, man. It's too thick. <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> and now it's time to have some Mayan coffee. My friend, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm James. Pleasure. David, pleasure. Nice to meet you. Welcome. Thanks for coming, you know, and um, welcome to the Oshmul Coffee Farm. Great place, the unique area for drinking Belizean coffee grown under a traditional farming system. Perfect. And um, so, farm, family owned, 27 acres, divided in three sections. The crop section, the family section, and the forest section. So forest, crops is agriculture and people. That's how the farm is set up. And we, so you guys have coffee and you have food as well, right? Yes. We produce 75% of what we consume, of course, which includes coffee now. Mm -hmm. And um, we are 100% on solar and we harvest rainwater. Oh, I love that. That's how the farm is set up. We speak Yucatec Mayan, you know, and we've been practicing traditional farming for thousands of years, and that's what we continue to do. We've incorporated coffee into what we do at the farm, so we can drink good coffee, right? You know, uh, my first language is Yucatec Mayan, and um, in my native language, welcome at this place today. I'm BNH, way taking Bela. So, one of the things we've incorporated here at the farm, one of the crops is coffee. And um, these here are some of the, of the dry coffee seeds, which actually comes from the tree. Normally the tree would give us coffee fruit, which would give us two coffee seeds, which has to be washed and dried in the sun. Then after the seed is dry, then it has to go through a shelling process. So these seeds has a shell around it that has to come off. And everything here is done manually. There is nothing that we plug on the wall and we hit a switch. Everything is done manually. So this shell has to come off for us to get the coffee bean, or some people call it the green bean. The shell, then we get the green bean or the coffee bean. Here we do it manually, and this is my sheller. This sheller here is actually is um, been used traditionally for shelling. Um, rice you know beating of plantains coconuts for oil so now we do we do coffee with it so we put the dry seeds in here and we will be we will do this it's very important for the seeds to be dry so that the shell is separated if the seed is not dry what happens is that the coffee bean gets hurt and get mashed if you notice here when we sh when we beat it starts separating the coffee bean 
from the coffee shell, right? You are. Check it out. All right, guys. Let's do this. The Thor of coffee. What are you doing? Beating coffee, man. What did it ever do to you? <laughs> wow, you feel it after just one minute. We have the traditional grinding stone, you know, have been passed and kept in the family. So our grinding stone, we use it to grind coffee. We have our dark roast here. So after we would roast coffee, then we would grind our coffee with the grinding stone. We align the beans, the stone handle here, the bit finer your grind gets. So you decide how fine you want or how coarse you want your grind. Turn. Grinding coffee. Struggle. Now, I broke it down, huh? You shouldn't ever lift it. So you just turn it on. Perfect. Look at this. Wow, look at the grind, man. Beautiful. Nice. Nice like, grind. Mmm, it's good coffee. Coffee farm. So we have some of the coffee seedlings coming up here. We have 4,000 seedlings coming up on the seed beds. 4,000. 4,000 seedlings. We have them on four seed beds. Two of the seed beds have shade, these other two do not have. We're playing around with the babies to see if they adapt to the direct sunlight. Uh, because coffee needs shade for it to grow. Yeah. Some of the coffee already transplanted. These are six months old from being transplanted. He transplants them over here next to the fruit trees. These are some of the mature coffee trees we have here. This tree is 10 years old. So we have a couple of them around here. Our our coffee trees, we have them spread around our fruit trees. And this is the kitchen? Yes, and here in the kitchen here we have the Hello. beautiful ladies, Hello. my How wife, my daughter. Pleasure nice and to uh, today, you know, the ladies are going to show you on how you know, we prepare a Mayan dish. A Mayan dish? A Mayan dish, everything from the farm. You leave the green chaya leaf, we just pull this from the tree. So from this, my mom was boiling the chaya leaf. So now she'll be um, chopping the chaya. Doing the chaya leaves with scrambled eggs, mixed with scrambled eggs and some onions. We'll fry it and handmade cork tortilla. That's our traditional Mayan dish. Yeah, and chaya is in the same family as spinach and kale. So it's a dark green leaf. Thank Just you. be careful with it. Yeah, it's fine. Thank you so much. Mmm. I like it. Nice. Super dark roast. No milk, no sugar. It's the best way to have coffee. It's like an Americano. That's good stuff, man. James. Congratulations. Delicious, man. Coffee from the Maya Mountain Rain, right? Coffee from the Mayan gods. Yeah, just like that. That's how we make the masa, right? The dough? Yeah. It is tough. Try my best. Pero difícil, no? Si. It's like super tough. You have to keep everything inside. Because it's a little, like, a little bit slimy. Yeah, it's slimy. You see, like it looks like oils are coming out. Do you want to do it like this, Nate? Ready? Yep. Right. Nice corn salad. <laughs> Got some sauce on there? Pico de gallo? Listo. <laughs> you have to like smash it, right? Okay, so we're gonna also grind the corn. Oh, that way looks way better. The stone was hard. <laughs> yes. Wow. It's tough. Look at that. Oh. No more. I said it another way. Green omelet. Amazing. Just, um, sa. We call it in Maya, sa. 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 Almost like a uh, horchata. Like it looks like it, right? Wow, you got the two kinds. Okay, we'll add some. We're gonna add ice. Ice. Yeah. coffee, Oshmo food. Coffee's great. Super dark. I love that chickens are like screaming at us. <laughs> and this is sa. Sa. Mm -hmm. This is a corn drink, but this one is not as thick as the one we had earlier today. 
super liquidy, and I'm excited for this. So first, I'll grab tortilla, still very hot, and then I'll build this. So put this like this, right on top. Chaya, right? So let's get some of this. Mmm, the sweet potatoes, super soft in here. I'm just gonna add some spice. They're saying it's super spicy. I don't know, man. I don't know. Let's see. It's like green omelet. Greenest omelet I've ever had. Yeah, I only added two eggs and lots of chaya. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. It tastes just like spinach. Very similar. Mmm. Smoky tortilla. Spice level is like a, for me it's like a six. Mm -hmm. Add some more of that. That's the onions. I love this. They're a true farm experience, huh? Tortilla. I'm gonna build. So that. That's some of the sweet potato. Tacos. Ooh, spicy. This is a really spicy one, huh? Ooh. There's so much flavor in it, though. The spice, the greens, and the egg. She literally just pulled out the eggs from right there. This heat is no joke. Amazing. That's why I need to cool down. Good food. Very nice. Pair with some delicious coffee. Mm hmm. Nice and black. I can have cup, cup, another cup. Where the cups? They're getting from <laughs> It's a turkey. It's a turkey. Amazing. That's amazing. Just be careful with the female turkeys. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Female turkey laying ass, bro. And these are the eggs we just had with the chaya. Yeah. It's incredible. So there's turkeys laying eggs. So these aren't turkey eggs. No, these are chicken eggs. So these are chicken eggs. The turkeys laying eggs. They just hatched little turkeys. So that's why it's like a bit mad. Wow. That's good. This is like, that turkey is not happy with me. She's about to stab me, bro. So this is our um, product. The name of our coffee is Oshmul, which is Yucatec Mayan. Oshmul is the original name of the village of San Antonio in the Cayo district. And also, we decided to use the Mayan calendar as our logo because we do the traditional farming system and we use the agricultural calendar. And um, that's the reason we use the Mayan calendar as our logo. I love it. And then we introduce a slogan, from the tree to the cup. That's what we do. We harvest, we process, all manually, naturally grown, no chemicals used. So from the tree to the cup, right? We are having dessert. So we're having a coconut biscuit with sweet lime. So do I just eat this first or? Mmm. It's a nice, dense cooking, like a biscuit. She's the boss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, this sweet lime. Yes. Yes, thank you so much. Well, thank you for coming. It's a pleasure to have, you know, have you at Oshmul Coffee Farm. It's a token of appreciation, man. Dark roast, whole bean for you to enjoy. I'm going to drink this every day. I'm going to make cold brew out of it. How do you say I love you in your language? Inkatech. Inkatech. No, Inkatech. I love you. Inkatech. 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 I love you, Nope. All right, guys. That was, that was amazing coffee. I loved, love the chaya with the tortilla. Oof. Now we're going. Next village? Um, next village, um, Cristo Rey. It's um, like the sister of this village, San Antonio. It's a bit smaller, but they're good. Similar in the tradition, so not much different. And our next stop is Carm's Home Baking and Cooking. So it's like a bakery, right? Like a small... Yeah. Restaurant slash bakery here. Look at this, all the bread they got. They got endless bread. So they have big loaves of bread. It smells great. Over here they have like some uh, some hot dogs wrapped in bread. 
We also have some sweets. Hi, is it okay if I pass through? Sure. Yeah? What's your name? Delia. Delia. I'm David. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So what are you guys doing here? Making a vegan steak with rice and beans with our product. So you guys have food and you have bread. Yeah. Right? We're baking the old bread. The old bread. Mm, nice and fluffy. What's in it? Like raisins? Yes, it has raisins um, and coconut milk. Okay, so is it the one I have to try today? I don't know, I have to try some bread, right? I'm ready to pull. I had like 18 tortillas today. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, I'm making a um, fried jack sandwich. I'm gonna fry the tortillas and put some beans, chicken meat, and some pico de gallo. So you're making a fried jack sandwich for me? <laughs> for me? Fried jack sandwich. Try. I didn't want another fried jack. I guess I'm eating a fried jack. This one is for the um, stuffed jack. This one's for what? Stuffed jack. Stuffed jack. So this fried jack is stuffed jack. Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna put it on the. It's like a nice puri. If you guys haven't seen my other videos, fried jack is what they usually have for breakfast. It's just dough thrown into oil, and that's it. So what are you adding there? Beans. Chicken meat, um, mozzarella cheese. I'm gonna try it. It's the Belizean empanada. Right? <laughs> wow, that's all for Nate. So right here we have a stuffed jack. This stuffed jack has beans, chicken, and cheese. I love it. It's super soft in the middle. Mm -hmm. It's different than the empanada. It's awesome because it has just new chicken. Oh my god, it's like it's almost like a uh, like a cheesy fondue pulling out, you know? Mm. It's delicious, but it's missing one thing. Spice. Uh the whole mass. Okay. It's not too hot. I'd say it's like a three, but it's like a, like a spicy salsa. It's good. Not four. Cool. Over here. Look at this, guys. So that was a stuffed jack, and this is a fried jack. Mm hmm. It's so fresh and the salad on top. Beans, stewed pork. This one has like almost like a gouda cheese. Nice crunch. Mm -hmm. That bueno. It's all too good. I've never had something like this. It's delicious, but it needs spice. More spice. No, it needs spice. It always needs spice. And this is not like, it's not like the habanero spice, so. Cuanto vale este? So five Belizean dollars for this. It's a massive meal for two dollars and fifty cents. So fried jack you can have for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. We're having it right now for like I think it's dinner. It's like four p.m. right now. The stuffed jack includes beans, chicken meat, and um, cheese. The fried jack sandwich contains beans as well, chicken meat, um, pico de gallo, and some lettuce. Um, heavy cream as well with goat cheese. That's not a fried jack sandwich. That's a fried jack mountain. <laughs> very nice, no? Very nice, very nice. Thank you. By the way, they also have other dishes. They have bread. Very, very nice. This is on the way to San Ignacio, right? Yeah. We're on the way. And uh, thank you so much, amiga. Too good? So what was the cost? It was two fifty for the sandwich. Five Belizean dollars for the sandwich. On the menu, we have the eight dollars Belizean. Eight dollars Belizean. So four U.S. dollars for that sandwich. I think it's a deal because that is really filling. This is my fourth lunch of the day. Let's go. Uh, yeah.